Hello, everyone. Welcome to Whatcom Community College. How's it going? Everybody feeling good? Feeling ready to be here? OK. So my name is Carla Cogleiser, and I'm the Associate Director for Running Start. And I have the privilege of representing my Running Start team by telling you all about this program. So the, here's the question of the day. Is Running Start the right choice for you? That is why we're here today, OK? So what I want you to do as we're going through these details and these processes, think about your experience as a student. Is this the place that you want to be? Is this a place you think you'll feel comfortable? Is this a place that you will be successful? OK, that's your, your role in this next hour or so that I'm going to keep you here, OK? Come on in, everybody. Grab a, a handout at the back, if you would, please. So you can follow along with what's going on here. Let's see if you can find a seat. All right, so let's get started. Um, as I'm going through all of this, feel free to throw a hand up if you have a question that's relevant to what we're talking about, and we'll answer questions as we go. All right, so what is Running Start? Let's all get on the same page about this, all right? So it's a dual credit program. You may or may not have heard that term before. So dual credit means that you can take a class at one place and get credit for it in two places. So with Running Start, what that means is that you'll take a class at the college, you'll get college credit on a college transcript, you can then transfer that credit back to the high school and get high school credit on the high school transcript. Okay, so dual credit program for high school juniors and seniors. Now, if anybody has younger siblings who are really excited about getting started with college earlier, we do have a way to admit uh, sophomores, maybe, um, if they're willing to pay the tuition. So they'll just need to email the Running Start office, and we can talk to you a little bit about that. But the Running Start program in particular is for high school juniors and seniors, and that is determined by the high school. You need to be enrolled in a public high school. So if we have anybody here that's a homeschool student or a private school student, you are welcome also. Uh, it just means that you need to enroll in a public school just for the purposes of the paperwork that we need to do. Okay. And here's the good part, parents, right? Tuition-free classes at the college up to a full-time schedule. Okay, so that's the basic outline of the Running Start program. So on your handout, you have on the front benefits and considerations. So here's the deal with this program. It's not the right choice for everyone, but you get to make that choice. So this presentation today is to give you all the information that you need to know to decide if it is the right choice for you or not. So I'm not up here selling you this program. I don't get a commission for every one of you that signs up. But instead, I'm just here to provide information. And then you get to make that decision on your own. So let's talk about saving some time and saving some money. So as I said, it's a dual credit program. So what that means is let's say you decide to be a full-time Running Start student. You come here for two years during high school. You get credit for those two years. You transfer those on to university. And it means you don't have to do those first two years of university. Okay, so I was just telling the story a second ago about my daughter who was a part-time Running Start student and went off to WSU. She is gonna graduate in May, yay, uh, after three years. Okay, so she saved herself one year of college by doing part-time Running Start. So save lots of time. Also saving money. So a full-time student coming to Whatcom after high school is gonna pay about $4,200 a year for classes here. If you go to someplace like WSU, you end up with room and board and tuition and fees and all of that, you end up paying about $25,000 a year. So that's where the saving money part comes in, okay? So as I said, think about your own path. What do you wanna do after high school? Where do you wanna go? What kind of experiences do you wanna have after high school? So here's some, some options for you. So maybe you wanna transfer on to university. So how does Running Start benefit you if you're heading off to university? Well, as I said, you're gonna get credits here, transfer those on to university, and save your time there. Do all credits transfer? Not necessarily, okay? So the trick to knowing how credits transfer is trying to figure out where you might be going to university because each university has the option to accept your credits or not accept your credits. So if you're going to a state school, most likely most of your credits will transfer 
private schools are a lot more particular, but some of them will accept everything. Just really kind of depends on the school. But either way, most likely you will be transferring credits onto the university. And if you're looking at competitive entry colleges that are really selective, what you're gonna be showing them on your college application is that you can do college work because you've done college work. Okay, so if you're transferring on to university, think about those things. Maybe you've decided that you wanna to come to Whatcom after high school. Great, get started now. And you're not paying tuition now, you will be paying tuition after high school. Maybe you wanna go straight to work. You're, you're not a student, you're not loving school. You wanna be done with high school and get a job. Great. So what you might wanna do is come to Whatcom, take a class in something like event planning. Put that on your resume, get a job in event planning, great. Maybe you wanna go into the medical field. You can take one class for one quarter here uh, and become a certified nursing assistant. Go get a job as a certified nursing assistant, okay? So there's lots of little uh, details like that where you could take a class here, go off and, and get a job. Maybe there's a profession you're interested in. We have professional technical programs here as well. And what I mean by that is a two-year program where you can learn a job skill. So we have massage therapy, we have paralegal studies, we have cybersecurity. So these are degrees where you can be here for two years and finish that degree and take that off into the workplace. Maybe you're one of those students who says, I wanna be out of here and go play a little bit after high school. I'm gonna take a gap year, I wanna go overseas. Great, come to Whatcom and take some language classes. So the way our system is set up, you can finish a year's worth of high school studies in a quarter. So for example, with world languages, you could get through the equivalent of three high school years in one year at the college. Or if you wanna get going right now, be part of one of our study abroad programs. You can be a Running Start student and study abroad, and Running Start will pay the tuition part of your study abroad experience. Okay, so no matter what you're doing after high school, there, there could be benefits to you for being a Running Start student, okay? Cost, okay, so you heard me say tuition free, right? That's the giant chunk of money that college usually costs. Uh, but also, every college student will pay some fees. So those fees are gonna go toward things like our learning center, tutoring services, um, computer labs, libraries, all that sort of stuff is paid for with fees. The, um, the rec center, which is beautiful. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's awesome. So as a Running Start student, your tuition will be paid, but you are responsible for paying fees. So that can look a little bit different for each student. Um, in your handout, it does show what Running Start pays for and what you're responsible for paying for. There's no numbers in there though, because the numbers are a little bit tricky. So here's what I've done for you. I've put together kind of one of the more expensive scenarios I can imagine a Running Start student paying. So the first thing would be your general fees. So they're gonna run $175 or so for 15 credits, which is a full-time student. Okay, so if you're here all the time, you'll be paying that $175 per quarter. If you're here less than full-time, you'll be paying less than that because those fees are per, per credit. Okay, so that might be all that you pay as a Running Start student, is just those fees. However, there are sometimes course fees. Maybe you're in an art class and need to, to pay for the art studio. Um, so that might be 15 to $30. Lab fees for science classes, 15 to $30. Um, you are responsible for your own books. Has anybody bought textbooks lately? They can be really expensive. So you have to be prepared for that. Some of your classes will cost you $0 in books because everything's online or maybe that class just doesn't have any books but there are some textbooks that might be $200 for just one book. So we do have ways of helping you find books to rent. You can buy used books. There are definitely ways of saving money on books, but just know that you do need to pay for those on your own. So your total for the quarter might be something like $410, okay? So I've also added on here, add $570 if you decide to take algebra at the college. So Running Start pays for all college level courses up to up to 15 credits so um, math is one of those places where it's actually below 100 level it's below college level if you still need algebra okay if you're above algebra you're into pre-calculus or something like like that that we consider a college level course then running start will pay but if you do need, still need algebra you'd have to pay the tuition for that on your own okay so this is worst case scenario <laughs> okay 
or, or close to worse. So here's a more inexpensive scenario. And I've put this together with the idea that you might have a fee waiver. So for any student who receives free or reduced lunch at the high school, or if you're a foster youth, or if you get any kind of medical benefits or food benefits, you also qualify for a fee waiver here. So what that means is you're not gonna pay those general fees that are up at the top here. That will be zero. You, as a fee waiver student, you still would need to pay for course fees, but you could choose courses that don't have fees. Your books could be borrowed. So we have a book loan program through Running Start where priority is given to students with a fee waiver and you just apply for the books that you need for the quarter, they're loaned to you just kind of like a library would. You take good care of them, turn them back in, get more books the next quarter. So almost all of our fee waiver students tend to get almost all of their books. So I like to be able to put that zero there. Um, also, if you don't have a fee waiver, you're also welcome to apply for the book loan program. And um, if books are left over at the first day of the quarter, then other students can have those books as well. So we want everybody to be able to use them as long as we have them. So your total for the quarter could very well be zero. Okay, just kind of depends on your circumstances. Uh, if you still need algebra and you have a fee waiver, you'll still need to pay the tuition because the fee waiver does not cover that. Question? Is that um, for the quarter, the algebra? For the quarter, yep. It depends. Yeah, so it depends. Algebra is kind of tricky because we do algebra differently than the high school does algebra. So it would depend on where the student places. They might place in what we call Math 98 or Math 99. So it might be one quarter just 99 or it might be two that's 98 and 99. Mm -hmm. Other questions about cost? All right, let's move on. Oh, wow, one more thing. So transportation is on you as well. So there is no school bus to walk home. So you need to provide your own transportation, whatever that may be. Uh, your student ID card does come with a bus pass. So that transportation would be provided for you, but otherwise you're on your own for transportation. Activities. Okay, this part is really cool, you guys, because as a Running Start student, you get the best of both worlds. You still get to be a high school student. So you get access to all those things that the high school has to offer. So raise your hand if you're a high school athlete. Usually there's quite a few, yep. So you high school athletes still get to be high school athletes. That is still available to you because you're still a high school student. You can still be in the play. You can still be on yearbook staff if you want to. You can, there's, there's a lot of things at the high school that you can still participate in because you're still a high school student. And you're a college student. So you get access to everything the college has to offer with the exception of sports. So you're not allowed to do high school sports. It's the only thing Running Start students are not allowed to do, um, but everything else is open to you. So you get to pick where you do these activities. So athletics, like I said, you can do at your high school. Um, gym, maybe you have a gym membership. You don't need it anymore, come to our gym. Or if you work out at the high school, you can work out here instead. Um, there's leadership opportunities here. So Running Start students aren't excluded from any of this. We have Running Start students right now on our leadership team for our, our student life. Clubs and organizations are all open to you, and there's so many different kinds. We have improv club, chess club, Japanese club, pretty much anything you're interested in, we'll have a club for. Uh, and if we don't, you can make one. Gather up a few friends and make your own club. Uh, and all the events happening on campus are all open to you, and because you pay those fees, pretty much everything is free. I asked some students recently, what do you guys pay for? And they thought for a really long time, they couldn't think of anything that they've actually paid for here. So all that is included, all the events that are happening on campus. Go ahead. So you mean you can't participate in college sports? That's right. Yep. So, so college sports are only for high school graduates, but you can still participate in your, in your high school sports. Yep. So you guys get to pick. Do you want to do some activities at the high school? Do you want to do all your activities at the college? You go back and forth, do a little bit of each. However you want to work that out, it's totally up to you. Okay, any questions about activities? All right. Ooh, let's talk about diversity. Okay, here's what's really cool. There's a couple cool things about diversity at the college. So the first is people. So by definition, if you're at the high school, you are with people your own age from your own community. You come to the college and you are going to be seeing people of all ages, all backgrounds from surrounding counties from all over the place. 
And so you get a really different perspective in your classroom. So imagine taking US history with a military veteran or being in a, a world religion class with international students. Okay, you get a lot of variety in the classroom, a lot of different perspectives. Also, classes. So we run about 400 classes per quarter. So you have a lot to choose from. <laughs> and we have ways of helping you make those choices. Don't worry, it's not gonna be too overwhelming. Um, but lots of diversity in your classes. So you could take anything from cybersecurity to making musical instruments, <laughs> anything in between. Um, oceanography, American Sign Language. So there's a lot of options for courses that you might not be used to having at the high school. Lots to choose from. And if you're curious what those are, just go onto our website. There's a menu bar up at the top that'll say class search and go play. It's fun. There's a lot there to look through, okay? Campus resources. So as I mentioned, you pay some fees, you get some stuff. So here are some of the things that you, you get as campus resources. Our learning center is pretty amazing. So no matter what class you're in, you can have a tutor. If you're in English and math, it's all set up and ready to go for you. So we have a math center where it's a, it's a room unto itself with tables and chairs, and you can walk in there, sit down, do your math homework, and when you have a question, you raise your hand and somebody will come over and help you. Okay, similarly in the writing center, if you are writing a college paper and maybe you're a first quarter student and you don't really know if it's right, is this college level, what do I do? You go into the writing center, somebody will sit down with you, read through your paper and help you out with that. If you're at home and that happens, you email your paper to the learning center and they'll help you. Okay, they send like a, a video back to you of, of changes that you might wanna make. Okay, so learning center is pretty amazing. Access and disability services and counseling services. So if you're coming to us with a 504 plan or an IEP or any kind of documented disability, go in and see our disability services and they can help you set up accommodations. They may not be the same as your high school. So the high school way of doing things is a bit different than we do, um, but they will come up with some kind of accommodations for you as appropriate. And our counseling services are also included in those fees. It doesn't mean that you get ongoing counseling once a week for the rest of your life, but if you have something that's bothering you and you need to go talk to, to somebody about it, we have counseling services available on a short-term basis. Computer labs, library, art studios, all kinds of cool stuff happening here. Faculty are really accessible. So our faculty, if they're full-time, are in class for 15 hours a week, which you are too as a full-time student. So they have office hours, they have offices, they have places you can meet, they are willing to have conversations with you about how you're doing in class, okay? And then class size, what do you think our class size might be? If you can imagine a college class size, you might be thinking of this, right? Like this feels like a college classroom if you think of like a classic college classroom. Nope, this is our theater. So this has almost the most seating on campus. Our average class size for college level classes is 18 students. So that might be much smaller than you're used to. So you'll get a lot of good attention in your classes. Okay. Questions about resources? All right. Scheduling. Okay. So at the high school, you have periods one through six, periods one through eight. You know what time you're going to be there. You know what time you're going to be done, right? So the college is much more flexible. So our first class starts at eight in the morning. Our last class ends, I think there's a class, sometimes it ends at 9.30 at night. Typically not. Typically we're done by eight o'clock or so. Um, but you get to choose when you have those classes. That's a, totally up to you. So if you're not one to wake up early in the morning, don't come in till 11. Schedule all your classes after 11. Or maybe you wanna work during the day and so you wanna have evening classes only. You can be here from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and be a full-time student. Okay, so it's really, really flexible in scheduling. So we've had students who are semi-pro hockey players or equestrians or people that have these crazy schedules where they need to be gone long, week long weekends. Have a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Only be here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, okay? So in your handout um, are some schedules. I don't expect you to read the ones up here, but they're the same. 
So let me walk you through what that looks like. So if you take a look at the top left, that's a full-time schedule. So what we've done here is the white space is the time that you would normally be at the high school. The colored space is the time that you would be here. So as I said before, 15 hours a week is a full-time schedule. Your average time at the high school is about 32 hours a week. So here's an important point. That does not mean college is easier. <laughs> Okay, so you're in class less time, but you know how when you're in high school, often they'll maybe let you do some homework during class time or that sort of thing. So if you're at the college, those 15 hours a week are gonna be focused study, focused learning, and then you're also expected to do a significant amount of homework outside of the classroom. Okay, so if you ask faculty, they will say for every five hours that you're in class, so one class typically meets five hours a week, you should be doing about 10 hours a week of homework. So if you do the math on a full-time student, that means school plus homework is 40 hours a week, full-time job, okay? If you ask students, they say, yeah, it's not quite that much. <laughs> so students will say it's more like, uh, for a five-hour class, maybe there's five hours of homework a week, something like that. And it really depends on the class, but just know that just because you're here less doesn't mean college is any easier, okay? There's still lots of homework to be done. So uh, that's one point about this. Also, you'll notice there's only three classes. Strange, right? <laughs> so the college system works very much differently than the high school system. So when you're in a class here, that class lasts only for one quarter, so for three months. Okay, so what we do is we take the amount of information that you'll learn at the high school over the course of a year, and it's condensed down into those three months. So guess what that means? It moves really fast. Okay, so what the high school covers in a year, we cover in about 11 weeks. So because it's moving so quickly, you're not gonna do six or eight classes here at a time. You're gonna do three, if you're a full-time student, three classes. Okay, so you'll be in those three classes for three months. Those classes will end, you'll get your grade, you'll get your credit, and then you'll move on to another three classes for the next quarter. Okay, so we go September to December, January to March, March, April to June, and then we do also have a summer quarter. Running Start doesn't pay for classes in the summer, but you're welcome to take them if you want to pay the tuition on your own, okay? So, an example would be, you start at eight in the morning, you're done about one in the afternoon, and it's only Monday, Wednesday, Friday, okay? So Tuesday, Thursday is yours, probably to study, okay? <laughs> or maybe you need to have a job, or you need to take care of siblings, or you have other commitments that you need to do. That's up to you. Or on the top right is another full-time schedule. So this person is gonna be here from 9.30, so a little sleeping in the morning, not quite so early, and you're still done by one or 1.20 in the afternoon. Okay, again, those three classes as a full-time student. If you wanted to, all those classes could be in the evening. Or maybe you wanna do two classes on campus and a class online. So Running Start students can take online classes, they can take any classes that you meet the prerequisite for are open to you, okay? And by meeting the prerequisite, I just mean sometimes there's something you need to do before you take a certain class. So maybe it's a certain math placement, a certain English placement, or um, an intro class before an advanced class. So as long as you've met the prerequisite, all of our classes are open to you, okay? So, you might not wanna be a full-time student. Raise your hand if you think you might wanna still have classes at the high school as a Running Start student. Yeah, it's usually about half of our population is part-time and half is full-time. So if you wanna be a part-time student, you might do something like one of these. You might be a half-time student at the high school with four classes, you're there in the morning, and then you have a break for travel time and lunch time and come for one class in the afternoon here at the college. Or, Maybe you wanna flip that upside down, take a couple classes here in the morning, and then be at the high school for a couple classes in the afternoon. This is a, a much more common scenario for anybody that has an after-school activity. You don't wanna be driving all over town, back and forth and everywhere, so come to the college in the morning, go to the high school in the afternoon, and then you're at the high school for your after-school activities. Okay, um, this can be mixed and matched in so many different ways. You have complete control over the classes that you choose to take here whether they're Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whether they're Tuesday, Thursday, whether they're morning or afternoon or online or wherever they are, you get to pick, okay? So the high school, at the high school, you don't necessarily always get to pick. 
Um, but what we can do is once we figure out your high school schedule, we'll make sure that we work your college classes around it because there's a lot of flexibility here into when you can take those classes. So we can make it work. Sometimes it's a little tricky in August when you get your schedule, um, but we do our best to, to make that work for you. Question? So if you're taking online classes, are you, are you, do you have to take them at a certain time? Good question. So online classes are not at a certain time. So you get to do that when it works for you, but there will typically be deadlines maybe every other day, let's say. So it's your responsibility to get online, figure out what your homework is, and make sure that you're meeting those deadlines. But there's not a time, as far as I've ever heard, where an instructor will say, everybody needs to be online at this certain time. Yeah. Sometimes with online classes, you might have to come to campus to take a proctored test. So once in a while, you might need to come. But typically, everything can be done remotely. So it just depends on which classes are chosen. So, so the question was, if you have a certain class, where is it on this? Yeah, where does that fit in with the schedule here? Mm -hmm. So these are just example schedules. Okay. So, so you can choose whatever classes you want at whatever time you want. Okay. Now there is guidance. Don't freak out, parents. There is guidance as to which classes you can take. Um, and typically what students will do is they'll come in and start working on their high school graduation requirements first. Um, make sure that those are all taken care of because we all want you graduating from high school, okay? So when I say you can take whatever you want, you can, but there's always going to be guidance in terms of moving you toward a goal, okay? But yeah, these are just example schedules. So you can mix and match this however you like. And in your handout, there's a, a small box that talks about how many classes at the high school match up with how many classes at the college. Okay, so you're not going to be more than a full-time student. So you might be 50% there, 50% here, or some other combination thereof. Okay, any questions about scheduling? All right, dual credit options. Okay, so I mentioned before what dual credit means. Running Start is only one of those options. So if you wanna save time and money and you wanna develop a college transcript while you're still in high school, you have these other options. So College in the High School is a program at the high schools where you can take a class at the high school for the year, you pay tuition, usually it's reduced tuition, and that class can then go on your college transcript with whatever grade you earn in the class. Okay, most of you probably know about that, but if you don't, just thought I'd give you a little explanation. And then AP classes, advanced placement, are classes that you also take at the high school. You're in the class for a year. At the end of the year, you take a test, and how well you do on that test determines whether or not a college will give you credit for that class. And it's different depending on which college you're trying to send that, that information to, okay? So the point here is, again, you get to choose. Okay, so you can mix and match these up if you want to. You can do one and none of the others, however you want to work that. And so there's different reasons for doing these different things. Let's say you have an advanced placement teacher at your high school that just rocks, and you really want to take that class. Great, take that class. And then just do your very, very best on that exam so that hopefully you can get college credit out of it. The same with the college and the high school. Maybe there's a great teacher or Remember how I said we take a year's worth of high school and we crush it down into three months? If that doesn't work for you for some reason, maybe college in the high school is a better option. And a good example of that would be something like calculus. Okay, if, if you really want to take calculus, but math is not something you're real fast at, maybe you want to do that over the course of the year in college in the high school rather than doing it here in three months. Okay, or running start. So just know that all of these options are good options. They just are a little bit different from each other. So again, you get to choose how you want this to look for yourself. Any questions about dual credit? All right. Okay, academic expectations. Here's where it gets a little scary, okay? So academic expectations. When you come to the college as a Running Start student, you are a college student. 
in every way, which means you need to rise to the occasion and know that you are going to be held to the same standard as any other college student. Okay, nobody knows you're a Running Start student. There is no accommodations made because you might be younger. Okay, so you need to meet those expectations. So that means that if you're gonna take an English 101 class, you need to be ready to write good essays. You need to already have those skills and be ready to do that. Okay. Um, the exception to that would be, let's say you're coming into Running Start and you're a little bit nervous. And you're like, oh, Carla told me that the academic expectations are really high and I'm not sure. Please be really open with your advisor. Each one of you will meet one-on-one -on -one with an advisor every quarter. And so during that meeting, as a new student, you can say, I'm really not sure about my abilities. <laughs> And what we can do is we can talk to you about the Learning Center. We can get you into some classes that teach you study skills and test taking skills and that sort of a thing. So there are support systems in place for you, but just know that you are expected to meet the academic expectations of being a college student. And when you get a grade here at the college, it goes on your college transcript and that college transcript follows you forever. <laughs> Okay, not to be dramatic, but seriously, if you apply to university anywhere, anytime in your life, they are going to say, we want to see all of your college records. And that includes anything that you've done while you're still in high school. That's also true of college and the high school courses, actually, um, that those go on a college transcript and will follow you always. So this is a decision I don't want any of you to be making lightly. It's not the kind of thing that you say, oh, running start, I'm gonna go give that a try for a quarter and see how it goes. No, we don't want to see any bad grades on your transcripts. So if you take those college transcripts off to university and they have A's and B's on them, yay! If you take them to a, off to a university and they have D's and F's on them, not so good. So just keep in mind that that is a permanent record, even if you're just starting when you're 15 years old, okay? <laughs> all right, so academic expectations. That's all I have to say about that, I think. Next, though, Independence and responsibility, okay? As a Running Start student, again, you're a college student. You're expected to be independent. And if your parent's sitting next to you going, it's okay, I'll help you, that's awesome. Encourage parental assistance uh, in terms of supporting and guiding, but the college staff are actually not allowed to share academic progress with parents. Okay, so there's no attendance sent home. There's nobody calling if the student's not in class. Um, if a student's not doing well in class, the faculty aren't allowed to call a parent. And if a parent calls the faculty, they're not allowed to have that conversation. Okay, so that means that the student needs to be independent and take care of themselves in that way. Okay, and the responsibility too. You're responsible for knowing your deadlines, for knowing what homework you need to do. Um, of course, there's guidance from your faculty, but it'll be different. So at the high school, you might walk into a classroom and it's the teacher's classroom and they've got it set up so that the next day's assignment is written up on the board for you. That's not how it works at the college. So instead, you're gonna be given a syllabus at the beginning of the quarter, so you'll know what the expectations are. Uh, typically, faculty will have an online presence, so you'll be able to follow the calendar that's in the, the online part of your class. Um, but it's up to you. It's up to you as the student to be able to be independent enough to follow all those guidelines on your own. Okay. Any questions about any of that? Okay. So, you might have heard me saying the word choice a few times. <laughs> you guys have so much choice in your education. So, the state is required to offer you a free education. You get to decide where you do that. So you can do that at the high school, if you're here, maybe that's not the best option for you and you're looking into other options. And now that you've heard what we have to say about Running Start, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. So I just want you to know that there are other options available also. So here are some of them. So Running Start is a statewide program that works at any community or technical college. So the same sorts of things that I was talking about with tuition free, but you still pay fees, you can take any classes, all of that is true at our other community and technical colleges as well. So maybe you want to do a program that we don't have here. Maybe you wanna be in culinary arts or you wanna be in welding. We don't have those here, but BTC does. So you could be a Running Start student there. 
or maybe you're just totally overwhelmed with high school, it's not going so well for you, but you wanna finish, we have high school completion here at Whatcom that you could do. Uh, there's lots of these other programs around the county, so Job Corps, Northwest Career and Technical Academy. These are amazing programs that are free of charge for you that you would be able to do if high school or Running Start are not a good fit for you. You can get a GED either at Whatcom or BTC. There's Options High School as a possibility. Um, talk to your high school counselors about credit retrieval programs. So what I don't want is for you to leave here saying, oh, Running Start's not for me, what am I gonna do? I want you to say, oh, Running Start might not be for me, but there are other options. I'm gonna go check them out, okay? So if you have any questions about these, you're welcome to contact me and I can give you a little bit more information. Uh, but I just don't want anybody leaving here feeling discouraged, okay? Because there are options for you to continue that education and the state's going to pay for it in one way or the other for you, okay? <laughs> so you have choices. So if you do choose to join us here at Running Start, your next step would be what we call admission. So at admission, we are going to explain all the little details that you need to know from filling out your application, to placement, to setting up your online presence with Whatcom, to orientation, all those things that you need to know, we'll talk about at admission. Um, so be checking there. But anytime in April or May, you can come in and, and do admission with us. Okay. So, are there more questions? Yep, go ahead. You can't add any more students like to the Running Start program? Right, like if you don't get in soon enough, you ah, go, you know. Good question. No, so there's, there's no cap to how many Running Start students there can be. There's no cap to how many students we can have on campus. Um, the question too is if you don't get in soon enough. So the, the, the only reason to get in soon would be there is a deadline for admission application and that is, um, but if you come in after that, it just means you don't get the very best registration time but we'll still admit students. So we, the quarter starts September 24th or 6th or something like that, and we admit students on that day sometimes. It's not recommended because classes can be full. <laughs> so that's where the cap comes in, is that classes will have a cap, and so if a class is full, a class is full. Um, but no, there's definitely no cap to how many students we can take. Go ahead. When is fall registration for classes? When does that open up? That's in May. The end so of May. The um, sort of. So we do admission. We get everybody set up in that way, um, and then every student will meet individually with an advisor, and that's where we choose classes. Uh, okay. And then registration for new students will happen in early June. So current students will be in the end of May, and new students will be in early June. And then each quarter that opens up, like so, fall quarter ends in December. So mm -hmm. November. November. Yep, okay. exactly. Yep, so we do register for each quarter independently. So you'll only re register for one quarter at a time. So you have plenty of time to get a feel for the classes, see what's interesting to you. You can also make a whole plan though. So if you want to complete a degree while you're still in high school, that's perfectly attainable. And we would help you set out a plan to do that, a two-year plan to do that. But the actual registration is every quarter. Mm -hmm. So this is still the question, is Running Start the right choice for you? So my hope is that when you leave here today, you'll have that answer. So as we've been talking, have you been thinking about, does this work for me? Can I see myself here? How do these different points apply to me? Mm. So the question is, if you do everything on time, is there still a chance you won't get the classes that you want? Yeah, there's a chance. So it's possible that a class could fill up before it's your turn to register. But typically, if students do everything on time, they'll end up getting almost all the classes that they want. And if they don't, we'll work something to make it happen. Yeah, there's a few classes that are really popular that do fill up really fast. Um, but typically students will find something that works really well for them. Yeah. Do online classes ever fill up? 
Yeah. So do online classes ever fill up? Yes. So they have a cap on them just like other classes do. Faculty still need to grade papers and they need to, to, to be working with the, a number of students in, in different ways. They need to be working with students individually. So yeah, they, they do cap. And, so, and sometimes those are the first ones to fill up, <laughs> depending on what the class is. Yeah, yeah. And our online classes, just so you know, are taught by Whatcom faculty. So we don't source this out somewhere else. They're Whatcom faculty, so you can still go knock on their door and have a conversation with them if you want to. Mm -hmm. What else you need to know? Got it all figured out? Yes, see big nods, okay, okay. So, as I said, if you would like to be admitted, check our website for admission dates. And it's a little bit up in the air right now, mostly because we're not sure when we can convene large groups. So I was a little bit surprised that they let me have this today, but after today, I have a feeling we're not gonna be having large groups for a while. So um, that's why they're not posted yet. So um, we need to kind of work that out over the next couple of days. But just know that late April, early May would be a good target in terms of when to come to admission. Because it'll be the same idea where we'll get a group together and I'll walk them through all of these different processes. So um, be looking for that. And if you come up with questions between now and then where you're not quite sure, give our office a call. Okay, the phone number is on your information there or emails on your information. So ask us whatever questions you, you have. We want to make sure you're making an informed decision. So I think you've probably gotten that message from me loud and clear by now that it's your choice. We want that choice to be informed. We want you to know exactly what you're getting into, the good and the potentially scary or the challenging. And we wanna make sure that this is the right choice for you before you decide to join us. So the other thing is, let's say you do sign up and you're all ready to go and you're registered and the day before high school starts, you change your mind. It's perfectly fine, okay? That part's fine, but let's say the day before our quarter starts at the end of September, you change your mind, then you're kind of in a pickle because your high school has already been running for a month, okay? So keep in mind the high school start at the end of August, we start at the end of September. So yay, summer break, <laughs> right? It's an awesome summer break, but you need to make that decision before your high school starts, ideally. Okay. Anything else? Quiet crowd today. Everybody wants to get out in the sunshine? Okay. Okay. So that's all I have for you. Like I said, call us if you have more questions, and thanks for being here.